Hey everybody, Jared Duckett, Duckett Ladd Dental CPAs and Advisors, back at you guys with my business partner Bill Ladd, and we're back here talking about another uh, another form of relief today. And I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have heard about this. Um, you know, kind of going back, we had the idle loans, we had the PPP loans, and now today we want to talk on, you know, what we're calling the HHS uh, provider provider relief fund. And Bill, let's just talk about this real quick, and then we'll kind of dive into the details, but. You know, this has all happened quickly. You know, yeah. I mean, I think last Friday, um, this date, we're, today we're talking the 17th of July, but last Friday is when this kind of came out. Uh, and a lot of chatter started happening really quick. You know, a lot of our clients started talking about it. We started researching it and seeing what it was all about. Um, but kind of just hit in, Bill, you know, kind of what you've heard on this provider relief fund, just really from clients and other dentists that we, uh, that we kind of, you know, converse with. Yeah, so like you said, Jared, obviously it's another component of the CARES Act, which gave us the PPP, uh, you know, the PPP loan primarily. Uh, this one was, seemed like originally it was designed maybe for other healthcare type industries, hospitals, things like that. Uh, and then, you know, the next shift of focus was kind of on Medicaid recipients, Medicare, or, uh, you know, those kind of uh, uh, type of services. So I think a lot of dentists just, didn't think it applied to them. And, and at that point, it, it probably didn't to some of them. But like you said, on July 10th, you know, is when we kind of got this guidance that they, I guess, understood that other dentists suffered too. And that, you know, is there any way we can help them out? And so they seem to really offer some pretty sweeping changes that open it up to pretty much everybody. We'll kind of walk through those. But uh, realistically, uh, I don't know you know, that there's many dentists out there that should not at least go through the process and try and see if they can't uh, be awarded some of these grants because it's, again, designed to help them during these tough times of, of COVID-19. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And so let, let's just dive in a little bit. So, you know, Bill, you did reference it came from the CARES Act, the Healthcare Reenactment Act, and, and kind of just has funneled down. Um, and, and then so now as of, as of, you know, July, I guess a week ago, to be eligible, um, you know, for this, uh, let's say, provider relief fund, um, there, there's a portal that's out there, and we'll provide a link to this, you know, in, in the comments of this of this video here. Um, but but to be eligible to apply, and I'm looking over here on my screen, guys, I don't have all this memorized, but Bill hit on it at first. You must not have received payment from those first two general distributions. So the, there was that initial fifty billion dollar Medicare focused general distribution. But then there was also that $15 billion Medicaid and, and CHIP distribution. So that's that's key right there that you must not have received a distribution, you know, from that. And I think that distribution bill, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe happened back like April 10th through the 17th or somewhere in that yeah. time period. And and that amount was, you know, ACH'd into the into dentist accounts. Yeah, some of them weren't even sure really what it was or how they got it. You know, I... I uh, we actually had one client who received a pretty small amount, honestly. And, uh, you know, according to a strict interpretation of this, this ruling, if you did receive one of those payments and there's very specific guidelines in this, in these FAQs that talk about what that would look like. You can actually go to your bank statement. It has a very specific title, uh, to the, uh, draft, uh, yeah. deposit that you would have received. Uh, and if, if you see that on your bank, then according to the standards as we read them, you're not eligible to get uh, or to be considered for this grant, which is which is certainly unfortunate because again, a lot of those distributions were pretty small. Yeah, no. So that's the first that's the first box, right? Make sure you haven't received distributions from any of those two um, those two distribution funds, if you will. Uh, number two, so you must have filed an income tax return for fiscal years. 2017, 18, or 19. So you don't necessarily have already have to filed your, I'm going to say corporate, or maybe I should say business, you know, tax return or personal tax return for 19 already. If you haven't, you can use your 18, but you have to have filed for one of those three years or be an entity that's just exempt from, from requirements to file. Uh, it'd be a, probably a nonprofit type dental, dental type organization. But if it's, if it's public practice, you know, typically you're, you're a for-profit business, you would have filed. Um, and then the other key one, so you must have provided dental care after January 31st. And it goes on, I'll piggyback right off that, that 
you know, you, you must not have permanently ceased providing patient dental care directly or indirectly through subsidiaries, you know, but that, that doesn't mean, you know, dental offices that shut down during the pandemic, of course, they're eligible. This is what this is for. Yeah. You know, this is a pro provide relief, you know, for them, but you can't have uh, closed down in January and, and retired. Let's say you retired in January and you think you can still qualify. Uh, that's, that's basically not the case. Yeah, same thing we had with the PPP. We saw that where I think somebody got in trouble. One of the first cases yeah. where we heard it got in trouble is that a guy shut down his restaurant back in 18 or 19 or whatever and applied for PPP funds. And, and certainly if you're shut down completely, you're not going to qualify and they're not going to pay in. If they do, then there could be some consequences. So uh, just be aware that, like you said, it's not the shutdown because of shelter in place or, or mandates, it's the shutdown as in you're done. You've shut down your business, your practice. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you guys are probably, if this is the first you're hearing about this, you're probably asking, okay, Jared, how much, you know, um, I get, I get another relief payment. That's great. I, you know, appreciate that, but how much? And so basically what it is, it's, it's, it's looking back at 2019 collections uh, and it's 2% of those collections is, is what um, is what that provider relief payment is going to be. And I'll clarify this just a little bit. We've talked about PPP, idle, loan, not loan, all that kind of stuff. This is a, a, a strict payment. There's no loan or anything attached to it. It's a relief payment um, to basically, you know, provide relief during these, these tough times. But it's 2% of prior year 2019 collections. And what you're going to have to do, I'll go one more step further, is print out, you know, reports, um, you know, from your practice management system. I'm not exactly sure, you know, if, if they'll take just the return, but probably support from your practice management system that shows those those collections, um, those collections coming in. Um, the, the last part, too. So, you know, the Department of Health and Human Services, they've worked very closely with the with the ADA, et cetera, to, to kind of get this this curated list. So they've got a curated list right now of dental practices with tax identification numbers yeah. to determine eligibility. And as you're going into this portal, and again, we'll provide links, but as you're going in through this portal, you will input your, your tax identification number for your business. And hopefully it, you know, it's on that curated list. Um, and it's kind of, kind of match up is how I'm seeing it in my head match up like, boom. Okay. Dentist ABC is applying. There's a TIN. They're cool. They're on the curated list. If you're a, 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 you know, a practicing dentist and you're an applying and you're not on the list for some reason, I'm going to use the word um, fight or you can appeal. Uh, what's the word I'm looking at? There you go. Appeal. You know, you can appeal because I mean, it's there's no way in the world that this curated list includes every person that's eligible for it. Um, there's just not. This stuff happens way too fast. So that's kind of the matching game. If, the, if you're on the TIN list, um, you know, you'll be able to proceed further. If not, appeal it if you're, if you're eligible for this. Um, anything else I forgot there, Bill? Um, yeah, the only thing I would say, the clarification is, I think there is probably going to be some document required. If you actually look at the FAQs, they're a little bit more specific. They say that 2% uh, of revenues from the most recent tax filing. So, you know, that's, that's something that, that, is kind of spelled out in the FAQs later on talks about some documents you may need. So just be prepared, have your tax filings handy, have your practice management reports, have all that stuff handy. Again, it's just like the PPP. I mean, you want to have as much as you can to try to make this a check the box mentality so they can look at it, say it looks good um, and, and see if you can't get into that, that pool of funds. And that's, you know, that's what we're seeing our clients do right now. They're submitting, uh, Many of them are, have, have submitted early on and are kind of waiting to, to hear what the, uh, what the result is. But again, uh, I don't know if, if we mentioned this, Jared, or not, but, but the most important thing to keep in mind is this time is of the essence. This is, yep. this is the epitome of the CARES Act, right? I mean, everything is, is, is lightning speed. So they, they rolled this out last Friday, you know, on the 10th. Today's the 17th. On the 24th is the last day that you can apply for this pending any kind of extension. So obviously this is something that if you've heard of, you probably are already on top of. If you're not, take a minute, look into it, uh, go through the process, see if your TIN is in there. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that most of you guys will find that they are and, you know, it can be a very smooth process. Um, and then 
you know, it's kind of hurry up and wait. Then you see if, uh, if you get approved. And if you do, again, this is something that could have a really nice, uh, it could help. It could certainly help. I mean, just taking a, you know, a, a simple, you know, $1 million practice. I mean, this could be a nice, a nice payment, you know, 20 grand can certainly help. So, uh, you know, certainly more, more of this will probably come out over time. It's going to be interesting to see if this program gets extended. Um, but in the meantime, certainly encourage people to look into it, dentists to look into it. You've all been affected. Uh, if this is something that can help you out, help your cash flow in the interim, uh, there's, in my mind, no reason not to try to apply for it and see if you can't get approved and, and receive those funds. Yeah, no, you're spot on. And I'll, I'll point out the date you said there. So July 24th, that today's the 17th. Hopefully you guys will be seeing this video today. A week from today is the deadline to apply for this. So just automatically go in there if you haven't. Uh, if you're eligible, start applying for it. I have heard from a couple dentists. Um, I'm not exactly sure if these de dentists have gone through the portal, but in their mind, they had heard that it was a lot of paperwork and stuff you had to apply. Of course, there's going to be paperwork. You know, they're, they're, they're giving out a lot of, I say giving out, they're providing a lot of money here. You need to have support for it. Don't, don't get bogged down in the paperwork, though. I mean, spend the, the time it takes because in Bill's example, spot on that million dollar practice, sitting down, putting this together could get you $20,000 of relief that you deserve from the impact of COVID-19. Um, so anyway, guys, just want to jump on here, kind of put that put that out in the video format. If you guys have questions, ping us in the comments, ping us back directly. We're here to help. Um, and then I will provide, you know, we'll provide the links to the portal and, and Bill referenced those FAQs. They go in a lot more detail um, and, and answer a lot of the questions you guys might have after this video that you can click on as well. So anyways, guys, um, happy Friday to you. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week and uh, we'll talk soon. We'll see you.